Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Drew and this is Just a Guy Linux. And it's been a while, friends, a couple months since I've done a full on video. Um, and the fact of the matter is, I've done a few streams in the last couple months and it's been quite a bit of fun. The last one being the DWM modular script. Now, while I did this, this script, I have changed my, my terminal of choice from Ghosty uh, to WesTerm. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Now, people are gonna ask, why did you take Ghosty out and put WesTerm in? And the fact of the matter is, uh, Ghosty on Debian is a little twitchy right now. And now, Ghosty is a great terminal. And at some point, uh, it may be replacing Westerm. I don't know, but because I really do like Westerm right now. Regardless, let me follow this up. So I had this script that installed Ghosty for you. Uh, the problem is the latest and greatest was causing problems. And there was a known bug. And I have it installing this version and it does work. But, you know, why, you know, it, it, there was a problem in the installation, so I figured let's go a little bit more stable, and that's when I decided to go with WesTerm. And frankly, I'm not sad about it. Is WesTerm the best terminal? Yeah, I don't know, but I can say that I genuinely like it and may just keep it um, going forward. One of the things that I like about, let's just go over here, actually. Let's go to the home page for WesTerm. Um, you're gonna be able to see a lot of the features. And some of the things that I, in, that I really like is um, it's GPU accelerated, so it's really smooth, has really good font handling, um, tabs, multiplex layouts, SSH is really, really seamless. Now, not everybody likes, again, the Lua-based configuration. I will say that I think that the font rendering, like I said, is, is really good. And it's cross-platform, Linux, Mac OS, Windows. You know, you can, the whole gamut, FreeBSD, NetBSD. Okay, so there are a lot of positive things associated with WesTerm. Let's go over to the GitHub, okay? Now, sometimes you'll find these projects that are um, older. And when I look at this, the release date for the latest version of WesTerm, it is more than a year old. However, the last commits, if you're looking at it, it's, it's still being like two hours ago, there was three changes. And so this is still a, a developed you know, still being maintained, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So the main maintenance on uh, WesTerm is still ongoing, and that's a really good thing. I don't know when they're going to come out with an actual uh, new um, version number, but overall, I'm, I'm good with this. This is a really good sign for this project. Oh, one more thing. It, it also um, supports both Wayland and X11, which is a big deal for me because, um, you know, X11 is where I am most of the time, but I know many of you are on um, Wayland, so both, you can do both. Um, by the way, I'm gonna go and switch over here. This is my um, WesTerm configuration file. Now, where do you drop this in, all right? You're actually dropping it into your user home directory, and it's a .westerm, where is it? I can't find it. Here we go. It's a dot westerm dot Lua. And then automatically you're getting the benefits of that configuration file um, for that user. It's, it's very easy to see. I, I know that a lot of people, because I looked at, I don't even know how many uh, users and their configurations. I went ahead and just did it myself and added some of the things that I thought were very uh, needed when it came to configuring this uh, terminal. Most of you guys know that I used Tilex for a really long time. This allows me to just like drop the configuration file rather than me 
having to go into the menu and make all the changes that I needed so that I could get Wes, oh, sorry, <laughs> Wester, so that I could get Tylex to do exact and look and do exactly as I want it to. So let's talk about the installation. It is not part of the Debian stable packages, so you do have to go and uh, get it from GitHub. Now, is that a bad thing? No, it's not. Um, in fact, it was really simple for me to actually script it during my DWM setup, and it worked out fantastic and very, very fast, very, very fast, much faster than installing um, Ghosty from the packages where you had to like install Zig and do the entire, entire uh, com compiling. So that took a really long time. This takes seconds. So it does have app images. I chose to use the, um, the Debian 12, 12 Deb uh, package right there. I will leave a link to this page and the actual um, Debian package that I used to do the installation. Um, very simple, super simple. Okay, so let's go back over and look at the um, and look at the configuration file. So I'm going to go over to Workspace Three and just open up a terminal. Okay, which is this WesTerm terminal. Now you're going to just look at it. It's like, oh, it looks like a terminal. You're right. It does. <laughs> it looks exactly like a terminal should look. Okay. Um, as far as colors, I have kind of cherry picked the colors so that it matches matches my DWM uh, scheme. And you can see that right here, basically. Okay. First of all, let's we, we might as well start at the top. Um, in terms of um, opacity, I'm just using a, a 0.90 so that it gives me a little bit of transparency. Now, when, with regard to the color scheme, okay, I'm using Night Fox, and it was it's the same as what I used in Ghosty. These are iTerm2 color schemes that automatically work for you. So if you just want to use something like Night, Night Fox, I think it's awesome that you can do that. Um, with regard to font size, you set it right there. And I'm using, for text, the Sauce Code Pro Nerd font. But at the top, where I'm you know, showing the tab, I'm actually using a different font, which is the Firacode Nerd font, mono. And um, it's really, really, uh, I like it. I, I, you know, I've tried a number of different ways to do this. This was the one that I... Uh, ended up using. Now, if you are interested in this configuration file, I will make sure that it is linked in the description below. Um, it took me some time in going through this. I know that it's being used in a couple different places now, uh, but I did want to mention that um, I'm a <laughs> I like blinking underline. You can see right there. You can even set um, you can set the rate of the how, how fast it blinks, and, and I'm using 500. Now I do want to mention this right here, this config term. All right. Originally I had this set as Wes term. The configuration term was Wes term, and instead I changed it back to a more I, I don't want to say older way to approach this um, this part of the configuration, but it, this works better. Uh, th there's just no getting around it. X term hyphen 256 color works better for Wes term with me for two reasons. One is um, I tried using it with Nano and it didn't work. Now, do I want to use Nano? No, <laughs> but you should be able to use Nano inside your terminal, especially when it's pre-installed with just about anything and everything, okay? The other thing was I like to use Control L to clear my screen quite a bit, and it didn't work unless you use this particular uh, Xterm uh, color uh, part of the config. So that's, that's the reasoning for this particular uh, line in the configuration. Now, clearly, I set the tab colors to, like I said before, kind of meet my uh, configuration for DWM. You'll look at them here. For example, um, the active tab has this color. And 
when I go over here, you'll see the same color, okay? It's like, that's, that's all this is doing is setting. So you have a lot of control over this, okay? Not everybody wants to see an active tab, I do. And the reason why is so that I can get to this section right here where all the key bindings are. And yeah, I'm probably gonna skip some of these uh, mouse key binds or mouse binds, I would say, not key binds, but mouse bindings, okay? Um, but you'll see right here, if I, if I do hit a middle button, it splits horizontally. Let me go ahead and just do that real quick. I'm using the middle button and it splits um, the terminal into two different panes. Um, so <laughs> that's, that's all that does, but you know, we do have other things. And since I'm a more keyboard centric user, um, you know, I just want to show you some of this other stuff. So let me just say, I'll Q and we'll get to that in just a sec. All right. So just this key bind, um, uh, section here is what we're going to talk about. So with regard to tab management, I try to approach it a little bit like I would in my, um, my browser, okay? When I say control -T, control T, okay, Control T, it opens up a new tab in my browser, all right? So with Alt T, Alt T, I'm going to open up a new tab in my terminal, okay? I don't know if that makes sense, but that was the idea around um, these key binds, Alt T as opposed to Control T in my browser. So like with this browser here, if I hit Control W, it closes, it closes the tab. If I'm over here and I hit Alt W, it closes the terminal tab. So that was the reason for that, okay? So I'm using Alt T, uh, Alt -T and Alt W, all right? Um, and then shifting. So if I just want to say, let's go ahead and open a few alt C a few times. And so now that I have six tabs open uh, on my terminal, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you that it, it kind of mirrors what I'm doing with, um, with my browser. So if I just say uh, control W, okay. I am closing the uh, the tab, so I can go Control T, and it opens up a bunch of tabs, and Control W. Same thing. If I'm coming over here, and I just say Cont uh, Alt W, it closes every tab. So same same thing, different modifier, as I've said before. Now let's let's split the pane both vertically and horizontally. Okay, so. Alt V and Alt H, okay? The other thing too is if you're, let's say right now you're obviously, you can see, um, actually let me try to biglet uh, lower and then figlet left and then figlet top. I don't know that this makes that much difference, but basically you'll see that, that you know, that it, the, um, the active part of the terminal is the top right now. And if I use alt and then just down, it bit, you know, you'll see that the uh, flashing underline is now on left. If I use alt right here, okay. It barely shows, especially because I'm using um, opacity, you know, there's a, there's a bit, of um, of transparency rather so you'll see that right now it's on lower uh, so but you're able to just kind of like alt and then use the arrow keys to switch between each pane okay and while you're doing that if you can just say alt q uh, you can close that particular pane alt q closes that particular pane okay and again alt uh, w closes the tab let me just finish off the uh, the video by saying, should you use uh, WESTERM? I don't know. I mean, for me, I think it's awesome. When I think about how feature rich it is, this might be a little bit overkill, 
but I'm not using a, like a feature rich configuration file. So it makes it very simplistic for me and I can just drop it in and it, it takes on, you know, it, you know, the configuration file is to my liking and I'm ready to go much like you would if you were using Kitty or, or Alacrity or something like that. Um, this is a terminal that is written in Rust. It is, uh, like I said, I think that it has great font rendering and um, SSH integration. It's for Wayland users and X11 users. It is a stable terminal with a GPU acceleration. Um, is it the fastest one? No, probably not. In fact, I would, I would actually push back and say it may not be in the middle of the pack, but I don't know that either. I really haven't done any kind of like benchmarking or anything like that. It's like I said, it's a terminal. So fast enough for me, let's put it that way, you know, is like foot, for example, is like super lightweight, you know, super lightweight. Um, but this is great for me. So with that in mind, I hope that you give it a shot. If you choose to do so, um, let me know in the comments below and I will talk to you soon.